Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug prednisone, also known by the brand Deltazone. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Prednisone belongs to the corticosteroid drug classification. To understand how prednisone works, let's first review what corticosteroids are and how they work. So corticosteroids are types of steroids that are produced in the adrenal glands, which are the glands that sit right above the kidneys. To be specific, corticosteroids are produced in the adrenal cortex, which is in the outer region of the adrenal glands. There are two main classes of corticosteroids that are produced by the adrenal cortex, which are the glucocorticoids and the mineralocorticoids, which each have their own effects in the body. Glucocorticoids get their name from their important role in glucose metabolism. Glucocorticoids increase gluconeogenesis, which is the increase in the production of glucose, primarily in the liver. This can lead to higher blood glucose levels. Glucocorticoids are also important in the immune system by influencing inflammation. Think about whenever you've had some kind of injury like a cut, a sprained ankle, maybe an infection, you've probably seen swelling or inflammation in and around the affected area. Inflammation happens when there is damage to these cells in your body. Inflammation is actually a protective response from your immune system, even if it is at times painful. Inflammation helps bring more white blood cells, antibodies, and other helpful things to the affected area to help treat the problem. Now, glucocorticoids, however, reduce inflammation and reduce the immune system response. So glucocorticoids are anti-inflammatories and immunosuppressants. This might sound kind of weird because we know that inflammation and the immune system are good at fighting off infection and helping with healing, but this will all make sense in just a few minutes. So how is it that glucocorticoids actually reduce inflammation? It's by blocking the messengers that cause inflammation. These messengers are sometimes called inflammatory mediators, and they include things like prostaglandins and leukotrienes. If we block these inflammatory mediators, we get less inflammation and the immune system doesn't respond as quickly. So one last time, glucocorticoids increase the production of glucose, decrease inflammation, and decrease the immune system response. Glucocorticoids do have many other functions, but these are the most important basics. Mineralocorticoids are important for water and electrolyte balance. Electrolytes like sodium and potassium are technically minerals, so that's where mineralocorticoids get their name from. The main mineralocorticoid is aldosterone. The way that aldosterone affects water and electrolyte balance is by increasing sodium and water reabsorption back into the blood. The more water in the blood, the higher the blood volume. And the higher the blood volume, the higher the blood pressure. It is also important to note that aldosterone increases the excretion of potassium. So one last time, aldosterone increases sodium and water reabsorption, which increases blood pressure, and it decreases potassium. Now let's finally get into prednisone. So why did we have to go through all of that information about glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids? It's because prednisone is a corticosteroid that actually has both glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid effects. So in some ways, it can do all of what we talked about, raising blood glucose levels, anti-inflammation, immunosuppression, increasing sodium and water retention, and increasing potassium excretion. So it really helps to understand your gluco and mineralocorticoids and how they work. Primarily though, prednisone has a much higher glucocorticoid effect than it does a mineralocorticoid effect. This means that prednisone is great for stuff like reducing inflammation, but it's not so good at actually retaining much sodium and water. We do, however, need to keep the mineralocorticoid effects in mind for certain populations. For example, not everyone should take prednisone if they already retain a lot of water and sodium, or if they have very low potassium levels. So what can we use prednisone for? Why would we actually want to reduce inflammation or cause immunosuppression? Well, prednisone can be used for a wide variety of inflammatory and immune system conditions. Prednisone can reduce inflammation in respiratory diseases like COPD, reduce inflammation of the skin like in psoriasis, and help with all sorts of other inflammatory problems. Prednisone can also reduce the immune response in many autoimmune disorders. 
Autoimmune disorders occur when the immune system is overactive. This causes the immune system to mistakenly attack the body instead of just pathogens like foreign bacteria and viruses. So in a way, prednisone calms the immune system response and can be used to treat autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, and many others. Prednisone is often given orally, so it does eventually get into the bloodstream. And once it's in the bloodstream, you can think of it kind of like it's on the loose. It's free to act anywhere in the body. And this is why there are so many uses for prednisone, because it can help reduce inflammation all throughout the body. There are, however, many side effects of prednisone. Think back to all the effects of glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids. Taking high doses of prednisone or taking prednisone over an extended period of time may result in increased blood glucose levels, so be especially careful in diabetic patients. Insulin orders may even need to be increased. Like we mentioned earlier, prednisone may also cause fluid retention and increased blood pressure from those mineralocorticoid effects. It may also cause hypokalemia or abnormally low potassium levels. With high or long-term doses of corticosteroids, you may even see something called Cushing syndrome. Cushing syndrome presents as weight gain, especially in the face and upper back area, pink or purple stretch marks. It can cause high blood pressure and much more. Prednisone may also increase the susceptibility for infection, especially from wounds. Remember, prednisone decreases inflammation, which is a very important stage in wound healing and in the prevention of infection. Corticosteroids can decrease bone density, which increases the risk for osteoporosis. These are just some of the many possible side effects of prednisone and corticosteroids in general. So here are some things that we can do to help manage corticosteroid use. Monitor weight daily and assess for signs of edema or swelling. Monitor glucose levels carefully in diabetic patients. If needed, monitor sodium and potassium levels too. Take prednisone with food and report any slowed wound healing or signs of infection to your healthcare provider. Do not stop taking prednisone abruptly, but instead gradually taper off the dose as instructed by the healthcare provider. Rapid discontinuation can cause an adrenal crisis which can be life-threatening. All of these things can help ensure that prednisone is being used properly and safely. And that's about it for the basics of prednisone. It is a very useful drug, but as you saw, it does come with a long list of potential side effects. As with all medications, keep in mind that the potential side effects of the drug should always be weighed against the potential benefits. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, Please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.